This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. This is the review for Mr. Robot Episode 3, Deepa. So a lot happened this episode. Um, once again, we pick up from the very beginning where we find out the fate of Elliot when he was tossed off the pier by Mr. Robot. Uh, but before we get into the details of the episode, I just want to cover some of the, the things that were basically done in this episode. Um, we learn more about Tyler. Uh, we learn a little bit more about the kind of the, the desires of Elliot in of himself. Uh, we understand his relationship with Angela better. We also see that maybe Ollie is not quite the, the douchebag, the boyfriend of Angela that uh, everyone pre- perceives him to be. Um, at the same time, as far as the overall episode, there wasn't really much um, plot movement, yet there there is an indication of perhaps uh, two types of enemies that Elliot may have um, occurred. One is the possibility of the Dark Army. The second is his boss is becoming a bit suspicious about that server that and the uh, DAT file that Elliot found. He doesn't quite fully believe Elliot. And the other thing is, uh, like I said, there wasn't much plot. There was like a lot of character development. We didn't really get into the plot until the end of the episode. Uh, But uh, in the conclusion of my kind of overview of the episode, I want to give my theory about uh, Mr. Robot himself. I go back and forth on whether or not Mr. Robot is actually real. And he's uh, like a Tyler Durgan type of situation. But... um, I personally believe if, if it is that if that's the case that he's a Tyler Durgan situation, uh, then Mr. Robot's image is that in the image of Elliot's father. But I wanted to discuss now that it's, we're in the third episode, like the type of personality that Mr. Robot displays and what po- is a possibility the basis is for that personality that we're seeing, like the influences, because this episode is heavily influenced on the reality of the hacking world of the computer world. A lot of what is displayed and put on the episode is very authentic it's very real it's there's no hollywood um you know chicanery or special effects or exaggerations it's very authentic uh you can you can totally see um or hear from the episode or the things that people discuss on the episode are actually things that actually do exist these are actual um things that are based in reality for example, the naming of the episode and the kind of the theme of the episode is called debug, which is the method upon which uh, individuals try to fix a problem that exists within a software program. And Elliot kind of goes on and on about his concept of debugging within his life. And uh, a couple other things, like towards the conclusion, I'm also going to talk about some of the, the books that may have influenced or it appears that may possibly have influenced the kind of the ethos or the aesthetics and even possibly the nature or the themes that have occurred in Mr. Robot. So but before we get into the end, we need to discuss the episode in itself, which is called Debugged. So we open up with the episode, not with a monologue of Elliot, but with a monologue of Tyler as he tries to prep himself up or prop himself up in a speech that he's going to give to his boss so that he can be the one who replaces uh, the previous guy, um, Colby, as the CTO, the chief technical officer of Evil Corp. And this uh, process that he goes through is he talks into a mirror that's three-sided, which I find very intriguing in and of itself. And he he likes very commanding in his speech. And every time he makes some, some kind of error, he hits himself. And then he starts again, and he, he even refers to himself as not being a, a cold robot. Then he used to show more emotion and more feeling, have a, a more emotional presence while he makes his speech. And towards the end of it, he, he keeps uh, saying this thing to himself, you know, you're going to be the next CTO of this company. You're going to be the next CTO of this company. And it kind of interchanges from him being at home where he's practicing his speech to the office so sitting in the waiting room waiting to speak to his boss that he has an appointment for so he can make his pitch now uh tyler is saying this mantra to himself and then the male receptionist who is the re, i guess you can say the assistant to the to the boss that he's going to meet ask him if he want are you sure if you want any water or anything like that and 
Tyler just completely ignores him. And then all of a sudden the boss comes out and greets Tyler and says, you know, basically kind of is very dismissive to Tyler saying, you know, I'll see you in two weeks. You know, he thanks him for coming by. Uh, but they, but the board is excited about a candidate for the CTO meeting. Uh, he can't discuss it with Tyler right now, but uh, they'll, they'll talk again in two weeks. And you can see just a flicker of emotion of disappointment on Tyler's face as he realizes that he no longer has the opportunity to be the CTO of the, the company. Not only that, but the uh, the boss actually compliments uh, Tyler by mentioning the fact that he knew what Ty was wearing. And, you know, Tyler was like, you know, doing the, the kind of corporate mantra, like, yes, you know, that, that is the Tyler. Uh, that is the tie that he's wearing, and uh, he smiles. He thanks his boss. Um, the receptionist says that um, he's going to email his assistant to let him know when the appointment is, and Tyler uh, goes over and insists that the email be sent to his personal email account and not to his assistant. Um, then you get, like, a little bit of a flash of... And we don't know if it's uh, Tyler's perspective, if I'm seeing this, or it's just, you know, something that TV does where you show the, the boss is meeting with a woman. And we don't know if this is the candidate that the board is excited for or someone completely different. But Tyler, you know, goes away very, very disappointed. And you can see that as he's in his car being driven by the same um, type of goon squad that had uh, Elliot in their crosshairs and taking him to... Uh, Tyler in the last episode and they park and they go out and Tyler goes and meets with this bum and it appears that him and the bum have had a previous relationship and understanding. Tyler pays some money and the bum allows Tyler to beat the crap out of him which is something that Tyler does. Uh, he, he really starts whopping on this guy and um, the bum asks Tyler to stop beating on him and Tyler ignores it, keeps going and then eventually stops. Uh, so the, basically the bum is basically passed out from being beaten. Checks to make sure he's still alive. Uh, picks up his things that he had taken off so he can fight this man. And goes back to the car. And it seems that his mood sort of like the tension that he had within himself has kind of evaporated. He's more focused. He's not so bottled up with the disappointment. So Tyler gets back, you know, he's back in this car. And his, you know, his emotional state is... Uh, much better, more relaxed. And the title credits come on. And we finally, after five minutes into this episode, seeing Tyler, we finally get to our protagonist, Elliot. And he talks about debugging. And he talks about the nature of debugging, which we'll, we'll talk about later in the episode. But he is in the hospital. Uh, it appears that he survived the fall, but he is in the hospital because he received some damage. And not only that, but... He's in the hospital and Shayla's there. And at first he's shocked by that, but um, it turns out that Shayla is on his emergency emergency contact, which she was pr completely unaware of. And not only that, but um, Shayla says that uh, he's been in the hospital for a couple days. Um, they're going to keep him there and that he can't leave until he gets a psych evaluation and that you he insisted that uh, because he doesn't remember seeing Shayla. He was in a kind of, you might say, an emotional state or very uh, disconnected from reality. It might be the damage that he received or the drugs he was on when he spoke to her last. And so she's reiterating their previous conversation. And um, Elliot's psychiatrist there, and she has to evaluate Elliot and determine whether or not it's safe for him to be released from the hospital. So Elliot have a, has a conversation with the psychiatrist and she's not buying his BS. And basically she was going to leave. And if she leaves, I meant that Elliot is going to be subject to a different psychiatrist, a psychiatrist that he has no control over. So he tells her that he is on morphine. And she basically tells him that he either has to go to rehab, which he refuses, or he has to submit to a bi-monthly drug test which Elliot agrees to and the reason why he agrees to is as he explains to the audience is he has hacked into of course he's hacked he has hacked into the hospital records or the hospital of this particular hospital he's staying at and he had placed him as his primary um, facility be, for, for the simple reason is because he has 
complete access to their network and he can alter and change the records at will. So he's able to change his drug results, whatever pops up to um, from positive to negative. So that way he can pass any type of uh, drug test and not worry about law enforcement or worry about um, his psychiatrist or being institutionalized or whatever concerns he may have and people prying into his existence. And he promised his psychiatrist, which is something he, he's not going to be able to do, and he, she knows he's not going to be able to do this, is that he's not going to take uh, morphine anymore, which we see him doing the moment when he leaves the hospital with Shayla. So Elliot is with Shayla, and they're in a kind of a convenience store slash grocery store thing. And he goes to pay for the goods, and he can't because the credit card system's down. And you see a note that the owner of the place put up saying that their credit card system's down due to the hack on Evil Corp. And then you start seeing um, the newspaper article with the uh, video image of F Society uh, on the front page. And then as you're going about, just like um, with Elliot's narrative about Evil Corp, you start seeing F Society everywhere. You're seeing it on posters, on light posts. You're, you're just seeing the image everywhere. And I think uh, F Society is going to start becoming more like Evil Corp, where this is going to be something that you're going to see more and more and more all over the place. Uh, because, again, where this, perspective, this perspective of this story is from Elliot's mind, and he's a very unreliable uh, narrator. So we don't know how much of this is, you know, both Evil Corp and F Society are really that pervasive in this in the context of the world that he's living in. But he and Shayla have a conversation. They have a conversation over the fact whether or not he actually turned in her drug supplier that possibly may have or may not have uh, raped her. Is a strong possibility from the indication that, that he did, but she wants nothing to do with it. Uh, he tries to ask her about it if she's okay, and she, she just basically shuts him down. And then they come to his you know doorway, to because they're both they both live in the same apartment complex. And his door is busted open, and guess who's in his uh, place is Darlene, the uh, female hacker that took a shower in his place the previous episode. So Elliot has a confrontation with Darlene, and once again, Darlene has what seems to be a stronger film er of familiarity to Elliot than Elliot appears, appears to have with Darlene. Uh, he kicks her out. Uh, Shayla's a little confused by her presence. He basically, because he, again, he doesn't have a very strong ability to connect emotionally with people, also shuts her out and says he just has to go to work. And then we cut away to Angela. And Angela, you know, tries to be a, a good Samaritan, if you will. And she tries to um, help a man who was running by her as she was on this run and give him back his wallet. And it turns out that it wasn't his wallet. It was some other woman's wallet. And she ends up coming home to find Ollie who was on the computer talking to Stella, the girl that he's been um, sleeping with behind Angela's back. And he's telling her his problem. And his problem is, is that this hacker has access to his, all this information about, you know, who, who he's been sleeping with and uh, the pictures that, th that he's been sharing with Stella, or at least been receiving with Stella. And that they want him to put a, uh, a disc on his computer at work and, Basically, it boils down to is he has 100 hours in order to do this activity or all his information is going to be put out there online. Now, at this point in time, Angela is completely oblivious and unaware of this. And he and and, and uh, Angela have a very awkward conversation before she gets ready to go to work. And what ended up happening is we cut it back to, you know, all safe where... So Elliot's boss is giving, you know, where Elliot's boss is basically giving them the game plan. On what they're going to do against F Society, you know, monitor social media, go on Pastebin, go to scripts, basically look for anything and everything out there on the the net to do any kind of search. You almost can say search and destroy to kind of figure out who these people are to find out they're going to trip up, they're going to make some mistake, we're going to find out, you know, they might use the same IP address and you know locate the IP address or something to find out who these people are who are making these hacks and making a uh, basically in essence uh, evil corp look bad at the same time his boss invites um, the people that are present at the meeting which is uh, Angela Ollie 
I think the the other guy's name is Larry. And Elliot to over for dinner. Of course, Elliot refuses. So his boss dismisses the other people, and he talks to Elliot, and he basically is like, you know, you're not exactly been, you know, on your A game. What's going on with you? Elliot says there's not really a problem. He goes, you know, you've been looking like shit. You know, I. I've been prying too much. Do I need to pry into your personal life? And he basically says, "You, in a very forceful manner, you, you, I don't want you prying into my personal life. And just basically kind of leaves. And upon leaving and going to his cubicle, he sees Mr. Robot, which he has a kind of a physical confirmation, a confrontation with. And Mr. Robot is like, hey, hey, you know, Darlene said that we needed to talk and let's go have a drink next door at the bar next to here. Let's have a conversation, you know, let's have a conversation. And Elliot was like, I don't want to go anywhere with you. He's, he's very upset with F Society. He's very upset with Mr. Robot, which is understandable considering he just pushed him off a pier. But uh, Mr. Robot is saying that if Elliot doesn't go with him, he's going to he's going to make a scene and, and everyone's going to be aware of his existence. So. Elliot agrees to it, and they they meet at a bar that's supposed to be next to his building uh, near his work. So they go to this bar, and they they have, like, these April teenies together, which is something Elliot's very reluctant to have. And he kind of has a bit of a disdain about it because the bartender charges him for $12. And it's already been established already how Elliot feels about the the monetary system that we currently live in, the economics of everything. So 12 bucks for an, an apple martini. And uh, Christian Slater is basically, or I should say not Christian Slater, but Mr. Robot is saying that, you know, he's sorry for pushing Elliot. Elliot doesn't believe him. He's basically telling him, you know, that he shouldn't be mad at his father, which is going back to the previous conversation and the, in the episode right before he he pushed um, Elliot off the pier and that he should basically you know kind of let go uh, not to, to be so angry anymore and then he leaps and uh, Elliot walks over to Mr. Robot and is like you're, you're leaving that's it it's over and Ms., Mr. Robot is like yeah you're the, you're the key to the whole plan without you you know the plan's, plan's basically no go and Elliot was like, so this is over. And Mr. Robot just kind of like, you know, kind of walks away a little bit. Uh, Elliot doesn't believe it is over. Uh, that is done. But at, at the same time, he, he kind of convinces himself to be a bit hopeful. So Elliot walks away from this meeting thinking F Society is out of his life because without him, they're not unable to uh, do anything about the uh, gas plant. They're unable to destroy the uh, the e car the, the uh, evil corp servers that he only has access to, and their their plan is a, a fail because without him, they're not going to be able to wipe out everything that they need to wipe up wipe out to take down evil corp. So he's happy, he's relieved, and he he starts thinking to himself that if F Society is out of his life which is the glitch, which is in the bug, and we'll talk about that in a moment, then he can live a normal life. And he starts listing off the things that he can do, like Shayla can be his girlfriend. He'll go see the stupid Marvel movies with him or with her. Uh, he will join a gym. He'll start you know, participating in social media. He'll start doing the everyday things that people should be doing. And that he, now that F Society is out of his life, that he can have a, a better existence. And he's walking through the city and he has a Starbucks uh, latte, which he says that's what he'll start doing, he'll start drinking uh, Starbucks. And he goes back to his boss, back to Gideon, and he basically says, you know, hey, uh, is the dinner still on? And he goes, yeah, well, I'm going to be there and I'm going to bring your, bring your girlfriend. And Gideon's like, you have a girlfriend? And he thinks about it for a second and he goes, no, but I'm going to ask her and, and we're going to go. And Gideon was like, okay, well, that's okay for, I guess, her to come. And then uh, Elliot leaps, and Gideon's just very shocked by um, Elliot's demeanor because it seems he's very happy. He was smiling, and he actually walks, physically walks out of his office and asks, asks his secretary, who's right in front of his um, office space, and goes, um, was he drinking a Starbucks? Like, confirming what he was seeing because, I guess... Pretty much whether Elliot realizes it or not, 
uh, everyone around him kind of knows what his belief systems are, that he's very anti, you know, S is anti-corporate. I mean, Gideon spoke about this in the first episode where he said he that he believes that Elliot would secretly be happy if All Safe were to go down as a company. So that experience happens. And now we cut away to Ollie, who has a dilemma about putting the CD into the, his computer. And he's very hesitant about it because he knows what it really means. I mean, he's not an idiot. But his uh, girlfriend comes over, Angela, and she goes and starts talking to Ollie and saying, you know, she's really worried about Elliot. He's acting kind of strange. So it cuts away from there to Tyler and he's getting ready for the night. He's looking at his phone and it's a receptionist from his boss that he's looking at that person's social media account. Um, then a woman comes in and it appears to be his wife and she's pregnant and she's questioning him why he's going out. He's basically saying it's for work. She says, is it necessary? And he says, yes. And she doesn't believe him. He does things for himself and not for them. And he basically says uh, what he does is for us because us is me, which kind of shows the kind of narcissistic tendencies he has. Tells her not to wait up. Then it cuts to Elliot and he and Shayla are talking. He was asking Shayla to go out with him to this dinner. She's not really having any of it. He, She's calling him on uh, Elliot's bullshit. Um, she basically doesn't really believe him that he did not set up her supplier at the same time, um, she questions him because he, he fails to understand who she is as a person. And she even calls him on the fact that she suspects or knows that he hacked her accounts and that anything he, he may have found about her online is not who she really is. He, he knows nothing about her. And perhaps he should take that other chick that was from some more, this morning, which was Darlene, to this stuffy dinner. But Elliot's very persistent, and he, he's actually kind of sincere in this, um, which is part of his new attitude to have, like, a normal existence, by saying to Shayla that he, he genuinely really wants to know who she is. So Shayla says, sincerely shows um, a little aspect of herself. She shares some art that she does that she's actually excited about, and it's, like, this abstract stuff that she does making these kind of like handbag deals and what she hangs up on her wall, which is right behind Elliot's head. And he's like, you know, this is good. You should do something with this. And he's very sincere in this. And they have a moment and she realizes that he is sincere. And and she says, you know, she will go to this dinner with him. At the same time, he cut away to Tyler and he's at this uh, club that he was going to go to, that he told his wife he was going to go to. And guess who's there? But the, uh, receptionist that was uh, the male receptionist that was uh, at uh, his boss's desk and they conveniently meet one another and the guy was like I didn't realize you went to clubs like this and he goes oh yeah this, you know, I go all the time and um, he's like you know why are you here and he goes because I think you're pretty and I want to take you home and the guy was like I thought you were married and then Tyler kisses him to demonstrate his willingness to go with with the receptionist and basically they go with each other for the night then we cut into uh elliot waiting with um his friends at his uh or co-workers at his boss's dinner um they're all waiting in the hallway to gain entrance into the home and finally you know they they gain entrance and it's a little awkward everyone comes in uh everyone meets um his boss's uh, boyfriend and his boyfriend, you know, does the whole social thing of like kind of grilling them. And Elliot gives these weird, awkward answers and stuff like that. And uh, his boss kind of knows how Elliot is, even if his partner doesn't. So basically what he is, is like, you know, he gets Elliot to come outside to the grill because they're having steaks and then they're going to have a one on one conversation. And basically Elliot's boss, uh, Gideon, is kind of grilling Elliot a little bit. Ha ha. Uh about the dat file and why he didn't tell you know tell Elliot that Elliot didn't tell Gideon about the dat file and what was inside but big Gideon while he's kind of grilling him about the, the dat file and stuff uh, in a very kind of social sort of way he apologizes to um, Elliot because he has a bit of suspicion because he didn't quite believe him in the last conversation of why Elliot didn't tell him what was in the dat file so Elliot was like you know 
you can't have Gideon looking at a server anymore or going any further into this because then it's going to expose Elliot, but also expose about F Society and the, and the plan, which is not a plan anymore. But so he knows he has to convince him. And he basically says, you know, I knew it was at stake. A stake. We had that conversation on the plane. I wasn't sure what we had. I didn't want to get your hopes up. I just wanted to, you know, basically do right by you. And Gideon was like, you know, don't ever doubt your skills. You know, he gives him a hug because <laughs> he knows that Elliot is given this kind of like, for him, a very emotional exposure. Elliot <laughs> goes, oh, shit. And he realizes he has to let Gideon hug him. And that was seems to be the end of the conversation that um, Gideon was like, you know, you, know, you never doubt his skills. You never have to hide anything from him. You know, he completely is with Elliot on this and completely supports Elliot. And whatever suspicions he may have about that server and about that DAT file and not being told seems to be alleviated. So, so Elliot is sitting, the dinner party seems to have gone on for a while. Elliot is sitting with Angela and they have a room, you know, remember like what it was like when they were children. And I guess they had run away together thinking they were going to the Met Museum and ended up going to the Queen's Museum. And basically they've known each other, it appears to be since they were both, you know, they're both the same age since they were eight years old. And... Um, they're having a good time and Elliot reflects, you know, with his internal monologue that he can get used to the normal life. He can get used to being normal with people, you know, having dinners, doing laughing, smiling, doing these type of activities. And then he gets something on his phone. Uh, we don't know who sent it, if it was just an alert, if it was a text or what it was. But he turns on his TV and the news reports that. There has been another week of emails, and in it, it indicates that Terry Colby was responsible for covering up a leak or a catastrophe at the, the, the plant that his father worked at. That he was responsible for hiding the information that the, that Evil, Evil Corp was indeed, in fact, responsible for his father receiving leukemia. That he was, he was responsible for that system existing and not fixing it. Uh, and this revelation, of course, means that Terry Colby is responsible, or Evil Corp is, in fact, responsible for the death of his father. But it's also revealed in this instance that Evil Corp is also responsible for the death of Angela's parent. That that's just how they know each other is because both of their parents had died as a result of cancer from working at this place. Which, it, when this is revealed, it's... Um, It perks up Gideon's um, suspicions again because he was completely unaware that two of his IT personnel had parents that had died from this scandal that happened years ago, uh, 1993 is what the news report state, stated, and that, that now there is this big, huge evil corp hacked and his suspicions turned back to Elliot. And Elliot who himself, you know, he's trying to compose himself because this is a very emotional moment realizing that yes indeed his suspicions about evil corp being responsible for his father's death are now true more importantly it's an indication that f society is basically in an essence calling him out because this bit of information if terry colby was as the fbi is asserting responsible for the hack why would terry colby or f society the people he's working with leak this information that would incriminate him further in the deaths of people so that means that it potentially that Terry Colby will no longer be the primary suspect of this hack. So Elliot leaves the party. Angela leaves right after him. They obviously don't meet up with one another. Elliot obviously takes off and Elliot, Angela is unable to catch up with him. But he has a flashback to his mother. And his mother has is, is, is been indicated in these flashbacks of her. One from the first episode where it appears that she may have been physically abusing him is that she is very harsh and very, it seems almost very cruel. Uh, she tells Elliot that he needs to stop crying over his father, that he, his father was weak and pathetic for allowing the uh, cancer to get to him and not fighting back. That And Elliot doesn't understand, you know, well, why she's crying. And she's like, don't ask him so many questions. And he goes, aren't you sad? And she's like, why should I be? It's a good night. I have my cigarette. 
you know, there's no reason to be. And then the flashback ends and it's Elliot sitting on, on the same type of bench or at least a reflection of that bench. And he has his his backpack on, his gear on, and it looks like he's he's going to go confront F Society. And uh, then we cut away to Tyler, and he's with the male receptionist, and they're engaging in sexual activities. And, uh, you know, as soon as they finish, Tyler encourages the guy to, you know, take a shower and stuff. And then as soon as the shower, shower goes on, this is the first part, and first part, you know, in this entire episode where there's actually any hacking going on. And he gets this guy's phone, and he what he does is he inserts a program and a chip in there so he can have control of this guy's phone. Now, we don't know why really it is beyond the fact that this guy is um, his boss's receptionist. So maybe he wants all the intel... Uh, that is associated with uh, his head boss. Like he wants to know who this potential CTO candidate it is, what the board is doing so he can counter in some kind of manner. That's the that's act of suspicion. But the manner upon which he actually does this is actually very accurate. There is a program that does exactly what this guy is uh, doing, what Tyler is doing. So this uh, program, that is this uh, hack, that this back, backward system update, that is this app that he's installing on this guy's phone in order to intercept his messages, is based off of a real spyware program called FlexSpy on the Android targeted phone. And it does exactly the same sequence as Mr. Robot uh, from the screenshot on the, on the side. You download this app. You're able to uh, do a systems update and you're able to hide the program on the phone without the person ever knowing about it. And you can have complete control of what's going on on this phone. And basically, he's going to be able to intercept all information and communicates on this phone. So ideally, by having the ability to intercept all this information, he's going to know who this potential CTO is or potential CTOs that are being um interviewed for this uh, candidate position and get ahead of the game. So once uh, he's finished, once Tyler's finished, uh, he eventually leaves um, the place. Let me go back to Ollie and Angela. And Ollie, you know, he confronts Angela and he wants to know what's going on with her. He wants to know what's happened. And Angela tells him, you know, her, his, her mom died as a result of this, uh, the Washington incident, the township of this factory that she worked at, uh, that Elliot's father died and that's how they know each other. And it's very difficult to kind of explain that because, you know, her parent died. And they have a conversation and they talk a little bit further. There's a bit of an argue, argument and eventually Ollie confessed that he needs to tell her something and he, he, he tells her about the hack, about what's happening and what he has done basically, you know, cheated on her and stuff. So they're sitting there and she's reviewing the the material that's out there and she realizes that not only just his information, but her information is out there as well that potentially could be sold uh, because she used his computer to look at her um, financial information, her bank account, which was linked to her father's bank account. And so not only is her father and her information out there, But it could be sold and she doesn't have necessarily the means or her father has the means to withstand a massive identity theft. So she wants to go in with a plan and she's breaking up with Ollie because she's like, I can't deal with you. And he's like, you know, no, we can't do this. You know, I lose my job. You lose my you lose your job if you care about it. You know this. You know, we can work this out. We can figure this out. And she basically comes down from you know, the, the harsh principle of doing this because she, she in essence doesn't want to lose anything. And then she was like, you know what? You're right. We can't do this. You know, I'm sorry. We, I wanted to break up with you. So I guess they kind of get back together and make up and it leaves it at that, that they're potentially are not going to do this, but the hacker gave them a hundred hours. So I, I doubt that this is the end of it, that the hacker may have something more in store with them. And then we cut away to Gideon, who's looking at some information and looking at the report that Elliot had given to him or the system administration report about that server. And now he is extra suspicious of Elliot. He 
doesn't know what to think. And he starts making some phone calls because now that it's been revealed that Elliot's father died of leukemia as a result of some malpractice on the part or not malpractice, but on on the part of EO Corp with their, their system that they had that was leaking, you know, chemicals that cause leukemia for the, for their workers and people died, 26 people died and there were survivors that he, Elliot could potentially be the one responsible for the, the breach in Evil Corp systems. And we cut to Tyler and he comes home from being with a guy and comes home to his wife and she's in bed and she's dressed up in SMN gear. And he was like, are you serious? And she goes, yes. And he goes, I'm tired. She's like, I don't care. And so he, bond, you know, does some bondage and stuff. And I guess they're going to participate in this like, kind of activity. And they cut away to, from that. And they go to Elliot. And he is at the F Society's um, headquarters. He has gone there with his gear. And basically, he he meets the hackers there. And he's like... He's going to tell them the plan. And that's the end of the episode. Overall, there was a lot of um, character development. Um, the plot didn't really move forward until the right to the very end where Elliot tells them the plan about how they're going to do this, I guess, without killing people. Uh, we don't necessarily know the plan is because that's for episode four. But overall, I think it was a very engaging and interesting episode. I find it very intriguing that all the different kind of character moves that are happening and building and insights that we learn from people, particularly about Tyler, uh, even a little bit about Angela, a little bit some there. So overall, I, I enjoyed the episode. I, you know, they kept me on the hook throughout. Again, I still don't know if Mr. Robot is real or not, but his actions that episode were... You know, they weren't as uh, flamboyant as pre uh, the previous episodes. He wasn't like kind of over the top with his ideology and, you know, the, doing the hard sell on Elliot. He obviously took a different route by just hitting him in the in the gut and the emotional gut with the release of the email batches that clearly implicated that to Tyler Kobe was uh, one of the one of three people responsible for covering up the fact that his father was being poisoned by the place that he worked at. Okay. So three things I wanted to talk about. Um, debugging. Uh, throughout the episode, Elliot talks about debugging and the nature of debugging. And he explains this premise in the very beginning when he's in the hospital, how debugging, um, while most software engineers is just meaning of finding the bug and getting rid of it, Elliot thinks that the debug is there on purpose. And the purpose of the engineer is to find out why the bug is there. And then either you're going to, as he later explains, work through the glitch that's affecting the software system or adapt into a, you know, a two pro into a new program. And great, you know, from this, the bug that's happening, create your whole new system around this bug. And he talks about it further, you know, when he talks about um, after leaving uh, Mr. Robot, how with F Society no longer in his system because they were his bug, he could be this normal person. He has, in essence, debugged and got rid of F Society because as long as he's not part of their plan or helping them with their plan, they can't go any further. He also talks about his aspect of his part in all this, how he was Evil Corp's bug because without him, this would never have kick started he was evil corpse bug and then he talks about how he doesn't have a bug because he keeps everyone at a bay he keeps his source code hidden and so there's not a possible way for anyone to be able to you know for a bug to occur for anyone to get to him which proves not to be the point because when this news story comes out then then the bug is revealed and that bug was his father, which was the whole time. The whole time it was his bug and F Society used that against him, his emotional connection to his father to compel him to come back and work on the plan. The other thing I want to talk about is Tyler. I'm not sure overall what the purpose of Tyler is, whether or not he's going to be the antagonist to 
Elliot, if he's going to be set up as a fall guy, what his place in, you know, Mr. Robot's universe. I think it's very interesting at the lengths that he is willing to go in order to secure his position as a CTO of this company and whether or not his um, efforts to do so in a way proves to be futile because if F Society's program, if F Society's plan or program comes to fruition, he's going to oversee the fall of the corporation that he's a part of. And I'm wondering if they're, they're showing Elliot, or not Elliot, but Tyler's character for the purpose of demonstrating that all this corporate, you know, leg climbing and ladder climbing is fu- you know, futile. There's no point into it because while Tyler is all focused his energy to get this job, his energy should really have been focused on F Society in of itself. He should have been going after them because they were the problem or the goal that he should have been seeking to conquer. Because if he was really, truly, as he spoke about in the first episode, someone that was a hacker, he would have gone after the problem. In the in a he focused his energy not on the wrong issue or the wrong problem. His problem should have been solving who F Society was, how F Society got into the system, and what F Society was all about. Um, the other thing I want to talk about was the influences that whether or not Mr. Robot is real or not, the, the type of personality that Mr. Robot is displaying. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with James McAfee, but you're probably familiar with his, his uh, I guess you say computer antivirus program, the McAfee program, but he is one of the individuals that is responsible for that creation. He It was his company, his idea. He put it out there. And he is a very intense um, and very weird guy. If you ever see this videos about him, his discussions, read his blogs, he's an extremely intense person. He's an extremely intense personality. He has all sorts of kind of um, viewpoints about capitalism, about uh, government, about taxes, about the way corporations should run, about monetary policies, all this different stuff. Um, he's not uh, anti-capitalist like Mr. Robot, but the intensity that he has for his uh, personal belief system seems to be, to me personally, reminiscent of Mr. Robot when he talks about taking down Evil Corp and doing whatever it takes. That kind of absolutist personality that Mr. Robot displayed, particularly in episode two, when he talks about blowing up the gas plant to take down um, Iron Mountain. And the fact that he really, truly did not care if some people might have died in the cause. And so I think he that personality trait may be something that is influencing the um, character or the portrayal of Mr. Robot in himself, if not necessarily the philosophies that uh, McAfee holds on the part of. Of Elliot, uh, he totally comes out of the whole, you know, cypherpunk movement on the whole more of an anarchist capitalist person. He is not against capitalism. He's just against the manner upon which it's being done and how the invisible hand, it controls everything. Uh, he doesn't have a necessary problem with people making money. It's just maybe how they make money, how much money they're making, um, the nature of money itself, the nature of control of money. Um you know, the anarcho-capitalists, anarcho, uh, you know, the, the, the philosophy is very broad on this approach about how um, the capitalist controls and how things should be free and the freedom of doing commerce and the freedom of movement and the freedom of flowing and moving and stuff. So he's very remi- reminiscent in, in that sense from that movement. And in some of his outbursts, particularly his... Um, disdain for society at large kind of is to me reminiscent of uh, Tim Timothy C. May who's one of the founders of the cypherpunk movement uh, some of his rants or uh, dialogues that he has about society at large and the nature of how things are run are very reminiscent of uh, some of the stuff that Elliot is talking about and there, there might be some of the influence maybe not that person in particular but definitely the ethos of the cypherpunk movement is very much part of the nature and the character of Elliot 
And then there's just a couple, a few books if you're interested in reading that obviously are influencing the storyline in a sense. Um, Fight Club with the whole taking down the credit card system and the possibility that Mr. Robot might be a, a Tyler Durgan. Uh, Necromancer, which is by William Gibson, um, is one of the earlier cypherpunk books, if not the first cypherpunk book, really. I mean, there's a few other books beforehand, but he's cons- it's considered the seminal work of cypherpunk. Uh, this is, it was William Gibson's debut novel. It's part of the Sprawl trilogy. And a lot of what uh, people, um, the terms and ideology that come out of this book, you know, influence people that implement it in the world. You know, the concept of cipher space is something that came from here. Uh, You know, the type of ethos that hackers have, um, the dystopian world, the the clash of the little guy against the the monolithic uh, corporations or government bodies really comes from uh, this this idea that comes from this book. you know, there's a character out in here that is a, a sociopath that kind of has the same similar traits that Tyler Durgan does. So this obviously is a, a book that could be part of the influences here. You know, of course, The Matrix and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I'm not sure if necessarily the books themselves is, are influencing the uh, the show, but definitely the uh, aesthetics of the look of the show, uh, because one of the directors and I guess one of the principal people uh, behind the show himself is responsible for the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo trilogy, the the original one, the Sweden ver- Swedish version, and actually directed the pilot. So that's definitely um, has influenced the show, and the main character from there does have some of the similar traits of. Elliot in the sense of the personality she she doesn't quite have a strong um, connection with uh, people in of, of themselves uh, there's a very significant disconnect she also has a, a bit of a vigilante attitude and wants um, the bad guys to kind of suffer in a sense and that they should be taken down which is something that she does throughout the trilogy in of itself So that's something that, you know, when it comes to Elliot and his idea of wanting to um, save the world, has everything that kind of kind of does with that, has everything to do with that. She kind of sort of shares that kind of ideology of, you know, she wants to save people and she does that. Um, The character is Elizabeth Salander. And the other is kind of like, a what if situation uh, is a group called True Names, which is about a group of computer hackers. They call themselves Warlocks. Uh, it's about virtual reality and the fact that they, in fact, take down a corporation and the U.S. government as a result of them taking down the system. In essence, it causes a war in a worldwide economic depression because of the, their ability to disrupt the computer systems. And this is something potentially that could happen if F society succeeds. I mean, if they were to wipe out 70% of all the debt that exists out there, and there are no backups, there are no not enough hard copies to prove the debt's existence, then this could cause an economic depression. This could, in essence, set off some kind of wars or many wars to occur in the world. The, the repercussions of doing something like this is not just like this kind of like aha, you know, hurrah moment where if our we are to believe F society to be the heroes, even if they are the, like the anti heroes, if they were to do this, there's a significant set of consequences that could happen. So that's it for this episode. It was very intriguing. There was only one really hacker moment in it, and that was when uh, Tyler was uh, in the dude's phone and using a backdoor app as a means of monitoring the communications. So that's it. Uh, Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a great time. This has been a Rosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.